Uh, injury update, guys. Bruce okay, was just go. talking about uh, Lyle Sendline hurt yep. his shoulder in the game, awaiting results on MRI. But I mean, he on played. The, he was out yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. On the injury topic, I mean, can we talk about how fortunate the Cardinals are right now heading into this bye week? I mean, they're about to enter this second half of the season for the most part healthy. And when you've got guys like Chris Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald, Carson Palmer, that is a blessing. And that is such a huge, that's so so huge for them to finish out the season. Especially when the theme yesterday was major injuries all over the well, NFL. Well, think about this. There was no John Brown yesterday. He was on the, the list to play, but he didn't even play. And then J.J. Nelson comes out of nowhere and has yeah. a solid game at receiver. That one-handed catch. You know, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you got that speed. Like you talked about earlier, Arians loves speed. He does. He needs guys that can stretch the field. And then Michael Floyd was the wild card yesterday. He right. came out like, hey, no one's thought about me all year. I've never been a part of the game plan. I am going to make something happen. Yeah. That one-handed catch that oh. got called back, Unbelievable. phenomenal. Unbelievable. And then, and then being able to to take it to the house you know yeah. the yards after catch scoring that 60 yard touchdown was huge yeah. that really got things rolling in the third quarter you know to me the key to this whole thing on offense has been Larry Fitzgerald and, and I don't mean to be sentimental about anything but if you remember a year ago he wasn't in the offensive plan and two years ago he was trying to get his feet uh, under him with, uh -huh. with Bruce Arians and Arians was trying to figure it out but they've started this year incorporating Larry in the offense and here sure. we sit six and two heading into the bye week in first place but I think this whole thing comes about with Larry Fitzgerald yeah. catching yeah. balls every week. It does. It, it, you know what? Two I mean, years ago, wrong they made him look old, don't they you made, think? Yeah. Like a couple, like last year, you thought he was on the tail end of he's his done. career. Mm -hmm. Now he's he's an active part of this offense. Yeah. They're getting him his space. Yeah. Where you know Larry's not a speed burner, but he knows how to you know take advantage of a little seam or a gap and get extra yards. You get it anywhere near him, he's going to catch it. And then just the energy and the motivation that he provides when he's part of the game plan. It just it, everybody feeds off it. Like I said, I don't mean to be sentimental about Larry right. Fitzgerald, but it just seems that way to me. Yeah, and you can, you can look at those veterans as a core and think they've leaned on them very, very hard. Chris Johnson, Carson, Larry. Yep. But also, each one have showed at some point in the season they're still human. And Larry and Chris showed that both yesterday. Larry right. coughed it up. That's pretty yeah, right? uncharacteristic yeah. for him. No, you know, and he's a Hall of Famer. you got to lean on him. you got to yeah. use him. You know, I was worried, though, on that tackle. I thought that was a Bush League oh. cheap tackle. Oh. The ankle? That, that could have been disastrous, yeah. the way they pulled him and, back. And there's no report on him today. No. Is there with anything? God, the fact that he stayed in the game was such a positive. But, yeah. man, when you looked at the replays of that, yeah. that had disaster written all over it. Oh, absolutely. Um, speaking of injuries, guys, you guys will love this. Smokey Brown, you mentioned, yep. he, was listed as, he was active yesterday. Didn't see the field. Well, some of his fantasy... <laughs> the fantasy owners got after him on Twitter. What? One of, yeah, one of them says, "Shout out to Jaywalk Back 12 and James Jones. Y'all just earned a trip to my bench next week." So Smokey fires back, says, "I'm gonna be at your girl's house. It's our bye week, Mr. Owner." <laughs> <laughs> Don't be engaging. On Twitter yeah, about, let about him go. Fantasy. Come on, let John. him go. Let him go. I mean, it's his bye week. You might as well throw a little stab out there. Wow. I love it. Is that crazy or what? Yeah. Really? <laughs> no, listen, I think we, we are in a great place right now being at 6-2, and two, no matter how you get there. And, and I said this last night, Tom, we always will forget about how we got the win. All we're going to remember is the win. Right? In the NFL, well, that's all that matters. That's it's all that matters. We're going to look back in, in a, a few days. And just, they're 6-2. We'll, six and two. we'll forget if they don't remind us. That's true. If they can kind of clean things up the second half of the season, we'll forget all about well, it. Well, and then the other thing, too, is as a fan, you got to ask yourself this. What are your expectations for this team? If you're happy with the fact that they're 6-2, and two, they're having a great season, they're exciting, they might make the playoffs, or if you're thinking, you know, this team is built and designed to go deep into the playoffs, we want a real true contender in this city. We demand excellence. We need to get some of these problems cleaned up. Remember 2008? They were 9-7 and seven in the regular season. Right. Made it to the playoffs, won the West, got home field advantage, and boom, they're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and it was 9-7. Yep. And, and last year they were 9-1. and one. Yeah, and then it was that's right. disaster after yeah. that with the injuries and then falling apart and then that's having right. to go on the road in the playoffs. You mean you're trying to remind us that we were here last year? <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's just it's like you just never know how these NFL seasons can go. But if, if you're going to have a problem with the team, I'd like to have it a problem that can be corrected. Right. Talent sure. is not the problem. No. And sure. they've got what they need at every position to go as far as they want to. It's the intangibles, and those are the things I think that they have to work on and get cleaned up. Funny, we've made this parallel before, but the USC Trojans and Arizona Cardinals, you can make a parallel because USC, probably the most talent, easily the most talented team in the Pac-12. Yeah. Finally starting to put, put things together, you know? It's like the talent is not the problem, it's putting things together. But um, right now, Bruce Arians being 
Smokey and Bruce. Uh, he was just asked about the fantasy owners getting on Smokey oh, Brown. Yeah, yeah. Just a minute ago, he says, quote, tough blank. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce being Bruce, you gotta love him. He just has to drop one of those. They don't have to be in context. No. And when, they, yeah. when he says it, it's funny. Yeah. Here's the I'm thing, sure you've got, you got to get guys healthy. And, and every coach realizes that when you're going into your bye week, if you don't need a guy, if you can get through a game without worrying about having to put him on the field and he's a little bit hurt mm -hmm. and he's been struggling with the hamstrings, let him have this sure. extra week. What a difference, right? right? To get better. Mm -hmm. Two yeah. weeks, you don't have to play in the cold. It was nice yesterday in oh, Cleveland. That, yeah, was, that was another blessing for the Cardinals. So the fact that it was a pretty decent day out Absolutely. there in Cleveland. But you're right, why take the chance? You know, in another sense you're saying, do you have that luxury in the NFL? Can you literally not play one of your best players just because you have that extra week? But right. it worked out, Yeah. you right. know? And, and, and the reason it worked out is because Michael Floyd had a great game. Yeah. And, and we haven't seen him at all all season long. Yeah. He just started behind the eight ball with that finger injury. But he's back, and they yeah. need him. He, look what he's done the last couple of years. He's good for eight to ten touchdowns a year. Yeah. They oh, yeah. need that from him. Oh, yeah. Coach Arians actually said, you know, it's not, it's not uh, rare for Michael Floyd to come to him on the sideline and be like, I got him beat. Give me a chance, Coach. And he said, this time, usually I think it's BS. I don't really listen to it. This time... I had a feeling he was right. Yeah. He was right. Well, every receiver, and I know from coaching for 20 years, every receiver is always open, right? <laughs> right. Like, right. Like, I got every basketball MVP. player yeah. has never committed a foul. Yeah. Right? It's you know, just, but but yeah. receivers are, coach, I'm open. I'm open. It's like, you know, it's, yeah. you know get, just, it's fun to get the coach's perspective because last night you had it in the World Series right. where Matt Harvey talked his way oh, back into the I game. Know, and yeah. I think everybody that watched that thought it was the right thing to do. But when you're a coach, can you be swaying? I mean, I would imagine your heart saying one thing, your mind saying another. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, you could just yeah. read it on Collins how he was kicking himself yeah. and the regret that he had for doing it because they should be going back to Kansas City to play. Absolutely. Well, Tony La Russa said this morning, and I could not agree more, you, you sent him out in the ninth. I get that. He says, Coach, I'm good to go. After the leadoff walk, good night. Thank you for your work. But are you serious? Right. You leave him out for another? I, I know. I, I thought the right choice was to let him go out there, but I knew it was going to be – uh, a nightmare for him when he sprinted to the mound. Right. You don't do that. Not no. in the big leagues. You walk out there slowly. Yeah. You save your yes. energy. Yep. This isn't a football game. You're not a middle linebacker. Who sprints? You're not. You're not a wild thing. <laughs> and who gave up the five runs in the uh, 12? Addison Reed, right? former Diamondback. That's right. That's right. right. Diamondbacks not, making their stand on not, the playoffs. We're not so upset that they got rid of him, right? <laughs> oh, he, he looked lost, <laughs> man. He looked like he did not want to be out there oh my in that 12th inning. He's like, take me away. Yeah. Yeah. But no, hey, enough of, enough about the World Series. Yeah. Let's talk some, some Cardinals here. I want to talk about where they're at in some, some national statistics, where they're at in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And you put some uh, some graphics together to talk about total offense, total passing. These are the where they're at the right NFL. now. Yeah, the NFL numbers were probably a little ahead of schedule where we wanted to be, but we had some issues with Andy. We lost yeah. him on the phone. But the Cardinals, if we look at NFL total yards, and we're talking about where they're at offensively, the Cardinals are third in the NFL. Now this is after last night, so we still have a game tonight, right? And so we, we don't we're not including two teams in this. And obviously different teams have had bye weeks and sure. haven't had bye weeks. But right now they're third with yeah. almost uh, 2,900 yards. It's impressive. I mean, yeah. they're consistent with their numbers. You know, the, the Rams game is the one game where they didn't put up good numbers this right. year, but they're, they're going to be there. Yeah. I mean, Carson's going to get his. They have so many weapons. They can hit you in so many different ways. Third in the NFL is pretty impressive. That's not bad. Well, let's be, let's be clear. I mean, yardage-wise, this first half of the season, this is historical for the Cardinals. I right. mean, this, this offensive start is second to none, really. No, no, it really is. It, it, what surprised me when we looked at these last night is that the Seahawks are eight. I'm shocked. With offense. I literally am yeah, shocked. That's that they, surprising. Where, where are those numbers coming from them? Seriously. The only thing I can think of is that they're going up and down the field a lot and maybe settling for a lot of field goals yeah, and right. not getting touchdowns. Yeah, 20, a lot of time of possession. What's more surprising, Seahawks eighth or Rams dead last? I think the Rams <laughs> doesn't. And to have a winning record. The Rams right? doesn't, that doesn't surprise me in the fact that Todd Gurley was out the first five weeks. So, so I'm not well, for four you weeks. Know, Once we get to rushing game, yards, though, I mean, there's some middle dog back. teams. I mean, there's a Jacksonville out there. I mean, there's right. a Detroit. You know, there's That's bad teams. Too. To be last and to yeah. have a winning record, yeah. it's shocking. And like we talked about, Cardinals six and two, one and one in the division. The Rams four and three, three and zero oh in the division. They haven't had that for a long, long time. I think they said the last time they were that was like 2004 or something, yeah. 11 years ago. Seahawks four and four, one and one in the division. And of course, the 49ers are sticking it up at two and six and zero oh and three. So, but it, then you look at passing yards, and the Cardinals are right there, fifth in the league. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. It is. It is. And then, man, with John Brown being healthy, they're going to come at Seattle. Oh. 
you know, with, with a full complement of healthy receivers. Yeah. I mean, think about it. And that was that was actually good yesterday because Michael Floyd needed to get on track. He needs to go right. the second half of the season. No, I can be who I was last year. Right. I think he's there. And then Nelson coming in, getting the job JJ, done. JJ, man, if and, he can stay healthy. Yeah, and Carson's got threats out of the backfield and some actual tight ends. Now, JJ's year. legs are about as big around as his pen yeah. right here. So <laughs> he scares me. That's no joke. No, yeah. he's fragile. That's legit. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, quick. he's 165 pounds. I know. Yeah. When you see him walk like we did at training camp, you go, oh, really? Yeah. That's yeah, him. Big Red has thicker yeah. legs. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the guy just has to outrun the danger. That's, he does, with that, and you hope he can. That's yeah. the, now the other. He's interest, always in danger when you're 160 <laughs> <laughs> pounds. And the interesting thing is, they go against that Seahawks secondary, which is you know the Legion of Boom. Everybody knows they're going to come and lay the wood on you, and they're going to hit you. Yeah. And so that's you know, can they stay healthy through that? That's a key element. Need some big plays, the takeaways, need to control the clock, get that running game going, and keep the Seattle crowd as much out of that game as you possibly yeah. can. Again, we talked about the Rams earlier with total offense, 32nd in the league in passing. Nick Foles, they made the trade last year, they brought Nick Foles in, hasn't helped them a lot. So dead last in total, dead last yeah. in passing. I mean, yeah. thank goodness for Todd Gurley for yeah. the Rams. Yeah. I mean, Nothing else is working. But you know what? The Rams make no bones about it either. They're a running, you know, they're, they're a defensive-oriented yeah. running team. They don't want to be no. having a lot of yards passing probably. Yeah. And they don't right. really, you know, they don't have the outside threats to, to be, you know, in the top ten in passing. Right. They're going to smack you on defense, and then they're going to run down your throat. And that's when you look at rushing yards now across the NFL, Seahawks number one, over 1,000 yards rushing in eight games. I mean, that's what you expect with Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, right? It's beast mode. Yeah. You know, I was surprised yesterday. I, I, I guess I didn't know Aaron's was up for the Cleveland job. It seems like every week there's a beef, right? There's something <laughs> personal. Is there anything yeah, we, right? we yeah. don't know about? And Bruce is really eyeing this one. He circled this game on the schedule before. I don't know season. if you know this, but in 2004, Bruce got a really bad cup of coffee when he was in Seattle. It's payback yeah. time. He's <laughs> there in two weeks. Right. He didn't like his Starbucks. Yeah. He was at Pike Place that, Market. He was charged that double. That latte was like That's 94 right. degrees, not 96. That's right. The interesting thing, the Rams climbing the ladder with, obviously, Todd Gurley there, 727 yards rushing their 16th as of last night. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see how that goes with Todd Gurley now running down people's throats. Yeah, so that's and gonna here's the other thing. They're very, very, very influenced by him being on the field. They need him. Oh, yeah. yeah. If he's injured or if he's out, that changes everything for the Rams. It well, does. let's look back two months ago, guys, and think where we are right now, which you have predicted with the Cardinals. We knew what they, they were loaded in the passing game, right? So many weapons around think, Carson yeah. Palmer. But the rushing game, you're heading in with Andre Ellington as your main guy. And David Johnson. David Johnson. Then they pick up Chris Johnson. Would you expect fourth in the NFL in total rushing at this point, midway no, through the season? I did, but I'll tell you what, it's a huge relief because oh, yeah. we have, how many years have we been crying about a running game? How many years have we been crying about the offensive line? We just can't get it together. Mm -hmm. And now finally, we have this stuff coming together and we're seeing some rushing offense. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, changed right? everything. Last year they couldn't run. No. In, in training camp they couldn't run. Remember no. we were doing oh. the, the preseason games? Yeah. We were down on the field doing the, the, the shows before the game against Kansas City and, and San Diego. We're going, uh, they have nothing. They had to sign someone off the street. Yeah. Uh, DJ or uh, David Johnson right. was in the doghouse, remember, with his hamstring. He was hurt. Yep. on the field during yep. practice. It's unbelievable how they become a rushing, yeah. dominating team here. That, that's a, it's a true threat every week. I mean, that that is the we, – we've talked about this so many times, is that they win games when they have a balanced attack. You know, we know they can pass. The in, in, entire NFL knows they can pass, know they have so many weapons on the outside. The fact that they have this prominent rushing game, is really it's going to be the difference in the second half plain and simple well we've talked about keeping carson healthy upright keeping yeah him healthy great way to do it yeah if you can take the pressure off carson and run the ball effectively so that defenses understand you can't just rush the quarterback that gives him some help doesn't it yeah it totally does you know one other thing i'd like to see change in the second half i'd like to see patrick peterson not returning punts oh I, is it just me he's too valuable of a weapon to have back he's there. you're right someone else can catch the ball and move it forward. I mean, he's not going to break three for touchdowns like he did his rookie year. I agree. You don't need him back there doing that. That 38-yarder looked pretty good. Though, you know what? Yes, he did look pretty good, and he gives you little glimpses. But man, what's I mean, the upside? I mean, finally, though, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. 